Hello and welcome back to Linux Plus. I'm Sean Powers. And before we get started on this video, I want to take a second and thank my Patreon supporters. It's actually slipped my mind the past couple of weeks of videos to do a shout out for my Patreon supporters. So thank you so much. And I am super sorry that I just forgot to add this segment. So thank you. You're all awesome. If you find these videos helpful and you want to be a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the description and I promise I will forget you as well. No, maybe that's not the best way to. So we're looking at section 1.5.2, which is part of the 1.5 objective for Linux Plus from CompTIA. And we're looking at this section right here, name resolution. Now, uh, NS switch is a config file we're going to look at first, but uh, most of the rest of these are just tools that you can use for doing domain name lookups, uh, either to a DNS server or uh, finding information about the name resolution stuff on your local machine. Uh, but NS switch is a little bit goofy. It's actually a config file. Let's look at it really quickly. So uh, right now I'm root on Rocky Linux 8, which is like Red Hat version 8. We're going to look at etc. NS switch.conf. And this is a file that tells programs that were compiled with the standard G library how to go about finding information. Now, this information goes anywhere from like how to find passwords to group information uh, to like user accounts and stuff. But what we're going to specifically look at is the hosts setting. And this line actually tells programs like ping, for example, how to go about resolving a name. You probably understand DNS in general, right? Like uh, google.com is uh, a DNS name that points to an IP address like 8.8.8.8 or something like that. And when a program is trying to figure out how to determine that information, it can go about it in a couple different ways. Yes, it can query a DNS server, but that's not the only way. For example, in this case, the first thing it looks in is files. And what that means is, uh, if you've heard me talk about the etc. hosts file on a computer, uh, that's where you can uh, put DNS information that you want to be local to this computer without it needing to query a DNS server. Now, if it doesn't find anything in the files or in the etc. hosts file itself, then it moves on to DNS. Now, some distributions will also do uh, like uh, MDNS for multicast stuff. So it'll look up uh, things in the dot local domain using multicast on the network. So that could be an option. It's not here on this system, uh, but there are different ways other than querying a DNS server. But in this case, if it doesn't find it in the files in the etc. host file, it will query a DNS server. Okay, so that's what we're going to test right now. By default, it looks in the etc. hosts file, but let's change that. Let's edit this file so that it looks in DNS, even if there is something in the etc. hosts file. All right, so let's edit that file, etc. hosts, and I'm going to add another line. I'm going to say 8.8.8.8 .8 is google.com. So this is on a system normally, that would mean anytime we ping, for example, google.com, it's going to return 8.8.8.8. Let's see if that is the case. Ping google.com. Okay. It actually is querying DNS. It did not look in that hosts file because it's querying. It's actually, for some reason, it can't ping out of the network, but it did a DNS lookup and it found that IP address that is not 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8 .8. It went right to DNS. It didn't look in the etc. hosts file. So let's change that back to show you what it looks like when it does come as default and look in the host file first. So let's find the host section. We're going to add back files. And now if we ping google.com, haha, see now it looked inside that etc. host file. And now it's trying to uh, ping 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 because we defined that in our etc. host file. Now, while we're here, I want to show you one more file. It is the file etc resolve without an E. So R E S O L V dot conf. Now this is where programs look to determine what DNS server they should query. If they go to that like second line or when we got rid of it, the very first, you know, place they look for a lookup, uh, the resolve .conf file will specify a name server. So if you want to change the name server, you can change it directly in this file. Like we could tell it to query a different name server instead of the one on the local network here. But you can see this top line that says it's generated by network manager. So making a change here does not stick because when network manager activates the 
the interface, it puts the information in resolve.conf. So you don't edit resolve.conf, even though that's where all, any computer is going to, or the programs on the system are going to look to find out what our DNS server is. So that resolve.conf file is going to be created by like network manager or NetPlan, if we looked at NetPlan in our previous video, uh, or however it is that you are configuring your interfaces and your DNS servers, that process is what's going to populate the resolve.conf. So know that even though that's where it looks, we don't usually edit that file directly. Now there's another tool specifically mentioned in the Linux Plus objectives that you can find out the information that your system knows about its DNS servers. So I switched over to Ubuntu just for funsies, uh, but here, if we look at resolve CTL and we do something like uh, status, I think that's the default. We probably wouldn't even have to type status, but if we do that, it's going to show us information about the DNS settings on our computer, like things that are set in the etc. resolve.conf. Uh, for example, our current DNS server, um, the DNS servers that are listed, if we had more than one, this would be like the one that it's currently asking and then like a list of all the ones that it knows about. Uh, but this is the information that Resolve CTL can give us. Now we're gonna use it for something else in, in just a couple minutes, but uh, this is the way that we can see the information that lives, for example, inside etc. resolve.conf. And in this case, uh, it tells you here, you know, don't make changes here because this is generated by, you know, another program. Uh, but same thing, name servers are listed here. Now I'll just point this out because it's different. Uh, this name server is running a local DNS caching server. Ubuntu does that by default, uh, which can be annoying. And I should probably make a video on that that has nothing to do with the, with the objectives for Linux Plus. Uh, but this is pointing to its own local resolver, even though the DNS server that it queries is actually remote and mentioned up there. So if you if you looked at this and it was confusing, that's what's going on. It's a local caching thing, but it does know about the actual DNS servers that it's going to query if we use uh, resolve CTL. I think, about, like I said, I think I can just hit enter. Yeah, it gives us the same information as if we do status. So anyway, uh, let's see one other, what else can we do? Let's uh, clear the screen. If we do host name, CTL. So host name, not, not just host name. Now we've done host name before, but host name CTL, uh, it will show us information about the system more than just the host name, like more than just the fully qualified domain name or whatever. It will show us, uh, for example, our static host name. Uh, it also has a thing called like a pretty host name, which is not terribly useful, but some GUI programs will use it instead of the, um, like actual host name. I, I've never seen that done in practice, but it is an option where you can set a pretty host name. Uh, and it just has a bunch of information about the computer itself, like more than just the host name, but host name CT or host name CTL will give us this information, but I can do other stuff. Like let's do host name CTL dash H for help. And it'll show us all of the various things, uh, that we can do. For example, we can set the, uh, pretty host name like we could set a host name that is pretty which whatever um let's let's set it so oh and this is something else that i just find fascinating you don't have to be root to do this which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me but is true nonetheless we can just say host name ctl and then um, host name, meaning we want to change the host name and then what the new host name is going to be and i'm going to say uh let's say test pickle so we've changed the host name of the system to test pickle. And we can check that by looking at hostname CTL and it will tell us now this is the host name. It's test pickle. And it even wrote to the etc. hostname file. Test pickle literally is now the permanent host name on our system. If we type host name, which we've looked at before, it's going to tell us it's test pickle, which is just the weirdest thing. And so I don't recommend that you do that, but I mean, it actually does make the change. And now, you know, I didn't know that you could do it without being root, but now I do. Uh, so I'm going to say host name, CTL host name, Ubuntu, I'm going to put it back. And now if we do host name dash F for full, we should say, yeah, Ubuntu dot home. So it, it I put it back to how it was, uh, but nonetheless, uh, you can make some changes doing that. Now, the other tools that we're going to look at are really more about querying DNS servers uh, for information. Now, again, on the system, you can use NS switch to determine like what order programs will look for information, but these tools are DNS specific. So 
We're going to use dig, for example, and dig will query a DNS server. It's not going to look at NS switch to see where it should look for stuff. So these tools are specific for querying DNS servers. It's important to note that if you're wondering like, why isn't it looking up stuff that I put somewhere? they query DNS servers. And so the one that I use the most is dig. It's just you dig and then like the uh, where you want to dig. So like dig google.com and it'll give us the information that it knows about google.com and it'll tell us who it queried. It queried that local caching thing. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, this is when it looked up google.com. That's the IP address that it got. Um, and the query time is how long it took to get that information. Now, this is something I want to show you. I mentioned that we were going to look at the host name, no, at the resolve control uh, again. So if we were to dig google.com, see how the query time took zero milliseconds? Well, that's not possible, right? It couldn't have gone out and queried a DNS server in zero milliseconds. That's because, again, the local caching name server, it kept things cached in memory. Like, so it took literally zero milliseconds because it already knew it didn't even ask. But we can clear that cache by using resolve ctl flush caches, press enter. And now if we if we dig, it's going to take a little bit of time again because it had to go out and query. We flushed the cache, so it had to go out to the internet and figure out what that uh, IP address is. Now, it didn't take long because it just queried... Uh, the DNS server and that DNS server didn't have to go up the chain further because it had it cached, right? The DNS server that's upstream from us had it cached. So it only took 15 milliseconds. But the point is we cleared our own cache. And uh, that's one of the things that, that I use Resolve CTL to actually do on a daily basis. Well, maybe not daily, but as often as I need to flush the DNS caches. Now, Dig can do other things too. Uh, we can do like a reverse DNS lookup. So if you ever like set up a mail server, you have to make sure that DNS maps forward and backwards for a particular thing. So for example, we could do dig dash X for a reverse lookup. I'll look for a pointer record, PTR record for uh, 8.8.8.8, for example. Now I know that Google owns that. That's their DNS server. So let's see what the reverse lookup for that is. And it's going to show us the again, the PTR, the pointer address, it's going to be uh, the DNS Google. Okay, so it, it re it responds uh, to a query about an IP address instead of responding to a query about a domain name. It's just looking it up backwards and it's called reverse record. Uh, you can do all sorts of things with dig, but it's not the only tool. Another tool specifically mentioned is NS lookup, name server lookup. And you can do stuff like NS lookup google.com and it's going to look up the information about google.com and it gave us in a different form, but it's the same information. Now I got to take a little time out because NS lookup for a long time was considered deprecated, which means that it's no longer being supported. It's outmoded. So probably like 10 years ago, uh, there were systems that didn't even have NS lookup installed by default. You would have to use dig. In fact, it would say like, uh, NS lookup is deprecated. Please use dig in order to do DNS lookups, but for some reason, and I don't know, there's probably a good story that I just don't know. It was kind of resurrected because now NS lookup is regularly maintained and it's a very, you know, cromulent tool that you can use in your arsenal for doing DNS lookups. So it fell out of fashion and was deprecated, but now was no longer deprecated. So NS lookup is back on the table, I guess. Anyway, let's use it to do some things. Another thing, it can do reverse lookups too, and you don't even have to give it a flag. Uh, it just recognizes that you're doing a lookup on a uh, an IP address. So we could do NS lookup 8.8.8.8. .8 and instead of resolving the IP address for that, it's going to do a reverse lookup for us. And again, the name is uh, DNS.google. So it, it did that reverse for us just by sensing or detecting that we were searching for a number instead of a name. So maybe in that regard, it's a little smarter than dig knowing what we were looking for. Um, another thing that I, that you can look up is other types of records. Like all we've looked up so far is, um, a records, or it would also have looked up a C name. that's like points to another name. Um, but we could also look up, uh, let's look at a mail record, like a NMX record. So NS lookup dash, I think it's type with just one dash in front of it equals MX for mail exchanger. And then for what domain? Uh, let's do it for the nerdlings.net domain. Okay, so I'm looking up the mail exchange server that's specified for my own nerdlings.net email domain. And it's going to give us the answer. I have two MX records in my DNS server. Uh, they are 
this one and this one. Now that may look like gobbledygook, but that's just my, I use um, MX Guard Dog. This is not sponsored, but that's who I use for spam control. And so they are my MX servers. And then once they filter out spam, they forward it to my internal mail server that I host myself. But uh, these are the MX records for my domain. So you can look up multiple types of records uh, using that. Now there's another tool that they mention, uh, one last tool, and it's just host. So you can do like, um, host, uh, google.com, I guess. And it will give us again, the same sort of information that we got before. Uh, this is interesting too, though. It actually looked up and gave us the MX record, uh, by default, it gave us the, uh, the IP address, the IP six address, and it gave us uh, the MX record for google.com. So, I mean, that's kind of cool, right? That's host. Uh, you can get more information if you do like host dash V google.com it'll give us a verbose answer of all the information that it can find um, and information about where it found it and that sort of thing i generally don't do that because host on its own pretty much gives you the information you want in a nice clean interface instead of you know looking through all of this stuff and that's just about all the stuff to go through uh one other tool specifically mentioned though is who is and who is queries like registrars for contact information about a server. So like if you wanted to know who owned nerdlings.net, uh, let's do that. Let's do who is nerdlings.net. And it's going to uh, contact my registrar and find out information about my domain, okay? And this may look strange. You're like, Sean, are you lying? Is this, is this the sort of lies that you put on the internet? Uh, well, no. What we're seeing here is nerdlings.net. It is owned by me. Namecheap is my registrar. But what Namecheap does is they allow you to, it's kind of like not hiding necessarily, but they are act as an intermediary. So if somebody wants to contact the owner of a domain, they can go through uh, the Namecheap organization and then they'll contact me. And the reason that this is pretty important to do and is pretty common is because in order to register a domain, you have to use a real, actual name and physical address uh, on your on your who is information. And so rather than have like my street address, now I do have a business address I could use, but I still don't necessarily want that out there for the who is database to be able to, you know, pull my, my information. So it's pretty common for a registrar to have this kind of cloaking service where they just like are a gatekeeper and say, okay, if you want to talk to the owner, just tell me. And they pass the information back and forth. Hopefully that helps. Now it was important that we went over all of those commands because they're all on the Linux plus objectives. But if I had to be honest, dig is a about the only one I use on a regular basis. And then I'll use resolve CTL if I want to flush the DNS cache, but that's really about it. The rest of them I don't use very often, not because there's anything wrong with them, uh, just because when tools all do pretty much the same thing, you just get used to using one and that's kind of what I do. Anyway, I hope this is helpful uh, and I hope that it helps you on the path to learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. I'll see you in the next video.